Hi, um, I just thought I'd show a video I've made of a test of the cleat box system using this uh, tracked vehicle which uh, sorts coloured balls running down this runway, a Lego model. Uh, here's the cleat box screen, the setup screen, and um, I've, uh, I'm going to use my own robot, so any bot, and um, we just click on that to select it to activate it and it takes you through a series of screens for um, just setting the system up. Plug the robot in, well I've already done that. Um, next screen should come up with asking me do I want a camera? Yes I'm going to use um, a web camera on this and it's got the currently selected one, a creative webcam live which is already connected. So I'm going to go on to the next screen which shows the control screen for this and you saw just before the controls came up in the right hand area over here that there is um, a video feed from the camera and the camera is um, just sitting in a cradle here this is a, a regular model that I've, I've used which normally has uh, down in this area around here um, the Lego uh, color sensor but so that we can actually transmit the pictures that are being seen for control purposes I've replaced it with this uh, webcam and designed a little cradle for that to sit in here and it's just going to sit on top there like that looking at the runway in the same way that the colour sensor normally would. So back here on the screen uh, the way the click box works um, is that if you're designing your own robot you can write up to eight different programs which you call K1, K2, K3 up to K8 and download these onto the uh, run onto the next brick just in the normal way you can use next G for the programming and then when you click on any one of these uh, arrows or green areas it will run the relevant program on the brick and this is all done uh, via the clickbox web server and uh, it also lets you uh, see the image on the camera uh, the whole thing is a bit slow, it takes quite a long time for the signals to go backwards and forwards, so you can't get that precise control, but nevertheless uh, we can have a go at running this model. So the model has got to sort some uh, bricks, uh, some, some coloured uh, balls, the Zampha balls, and these are already sorted here, you can see, into four trays. So what we're going to do is to take up some of these and load them into the runway. So I'll start with a, a blue ball and we'll take this up and just place it on the runway here and it runs down and then we'll take a green one here we go and add that onto the runway then a yellow one add that onto the runway and then a red one so we've got a sequence a linear sequence of the four colors involved and now we'll mix things up a bit uh, let's go for a, a green on top of that and then uh, maybe a yellow after that here yeah. Put that on the runway, uh, then a blue, and put that on the runway, and then finally a red on the end. And we'll leave uh, one ball in each of the receptacles just as a sort of reference as to what uh, colour we're expecting to go down there. So if we look at the uh, runway, we can see that there are two rods which are actually uh, holding the balls trapped. Um, as the motor here rotates, these uh, oscillate up and down and they first of all let a ball into the area under the camera where it can be seen and then when the second uh, ball is released uh, it will run down the runway sorry slightly off there, run down the runway and hopefully the track vehicle will have moved along so that it's opposite the correct um, receptacle so let's give it a go now there are um, eight programs available I've actually used uh, one, two, three and four to select the colour and so move the uh, robot to the correct place. I've used 7 as an initialization program but in order to pass data from one to the other I actually use data files which are written onto the next brick and then um, uh, so we'll start that off by initializing things and that's program 7 that doesn't actually do anything but we need to run it. There we go. You won't see anything, not very shattering, uh, shattering at the moment. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is to release the first ball underneath the camera and that's done by running program K8 which I'll click on now and you heard the motor go and if we look after a short pause you can see the edge of the blue ball unfortunately on the cleat box interface the uh, 
the controls override the picture area. Um, it's actually better if you use the uh, an iPhone or something like that to control. It doesn't quite overlap as much, but for the video purposes, I think this screen is probably going to be easier. And you can see that indeed we have the blue ball, the first blue ball, trapped underneath the camera there. Well, um, I've set it up so that I know that if we detect a blue ball, this is where the human control comes in, we need to run program K1. And so I point at K1 and click on that. And if we zoom out, after a short pause, it says blue, runs along, and the ball is collected in the blue receptacle. We can see on the runway that there is um, a green ball there under the camera. And indeed, that we can see on the screen as well. So now we know that uh, the green one needs program K2, so we'll run that, and it runs along, runs down and into the green one. Uh, this time we can see that there's a yellow ball detected here. Yellow is three, so we'll run that there. It runs along, ball disappears. After a short pause, it shows you the sort of delay you get. You can see that the screen changes to red. And indeed, if we look down here, we can now see that there are two uh, yellow balls in there, whereas there was one before, still one in the red, and a red ball is the next one to be detected there, and on the screen, so let's run K4, which is for colour red balls, we'll zoom out there, so as we've clicked it, after a pause, it says red, runs along to there, oops, we're not quite in the right position for the tray, but you get the idea, we'll just put that in manually, and um, now we can go back and run through a bit faster. We've got a green ball detected there, and if we go to number two, which is green, and click on that, this runs back to the green position and the ball goes in there. And then we've now got, after a short pause, the yellow ball detected there, um, and that's number three, so we'll run that, run along, and the yellow ball runs into the yellow container. Then we've got another blue ball there, that's number one, Run that. Pause before it gets through. Hopefully it'll get there, thinking about it. Okay, it's a bit hit and miss on this. There it goes, blue. And the blue ball in there. And we've got one ball left there, which is a red one. Red detected here, and that's number four. We'll click on that. And we run along to the red position, and uh, still not in right position. Well, can't win them all. Red ball in there. And now you can see there's no balls there left, and there's no balls detected on the screen. The extra program is K6, which is when you've run out of balls. We click on that. No object detected, it says. And the run back and hopefully stop in the park position there. And so we've got our balls sorted out there. Three in each one, although a bit of help for the red one for me. And you can see that this gives you a good illustration of the use of the Clickbox program, which is actually on offer now, which is why I've just uh, purchased it um, at the new price. I think it's quite reasonable and worth having a play with. Thanks very much for listening.